However, it is at the end of the meeting where most, where you and I screw up and say, yes, that's us. That is the problem we're struggling with. So bring it back now to how does that mindset help you qualify and disqualify your prospects? Well, at the end of the day, when you realize you only need four or five prospects, four or five wins, excuse me, to have an amazing year, you don't actually don't need that many people in your pipeline. So number one, spend copious amounts of time with good marketing. We've talked about that in plenty of different episodes. But now when you get the right people in your pipeline, what can you do to qualify your prospects quicker? And this is where my Do You Believe What I Believe presentation came about. Because when I put together intro meetings, discovery meetings, I realized that my job was to have a very set agenda, every single intro meeting, not to go off it. It should be set in stone. I run the same agenda with every prospect. And it started this way. First part of the pro uh, meeting, very simple, set up the expectations, get to know the prospect, right? Middle of the meeting is going to be all about the fact finding, get to learn about the prospect. Where are they at? What are they trying to accomplish? However, it is at the end of the meeting where most, where you and I screw up. Even if we felt like we killed it, we didn't do anything to really qualify the prospect. And this is why we walk out of the meeting feeling like it was a great meeting, feeling like the prospect was eating out of your hands, and then it goes nowhere. It's when they proverbial, per proverbially ghost you, right? The ghosting we all hate. So I said, okay, I've got to have a better way to wrap up a discovery meeting to determine if this prospect's a good fit for me. And so I developed this, do you believe what I believe presentation? And the presentation was built around what I believe. This is the, the how I set up this presentation. Before I get into actually delivering it, let me set up how I set, uh, or how I set up the presentation itself. I wanted to deliver the presentation so the prospect knew where I stood. Why is that important? Well, if you have followed our content closely enough, you know we talk about psychographics all the time, right? Demographics alone cannot identify an ideal prospect. You need psychographics. You see, your best clients are your best clients because you and them are psychographically aligned. They believe what you believe. They stand for what you stand for. They make decisions the way you make decisions. Now, when I say they believe in what you believe, I'm not talking about religion, politics, things like that. No, when it comes to what you sell, they have a lot of the same beliefs and opinions that you do. That's why they're an ideal fit because they're letting you do your best work. So I had to develop a presentation built around my psychographics or what I sold to see if the prospect was a good fit for me. The second thing I did is I built it around the story selling formula that we teach here at Complete Game Consulting. Now, that formula comes directly from building a story brand, the book written by Donald Miller. We are, I am a certified guide, so we can deliver their material. But it comes right from that story selling formula, which is simple. There is a hero who has a goal but they have a problem keeping them from achieving the goal. Therefore, they need a guide who has a solution to help them have success and avoid failure. Now, key points in that story. Number one, your prospect is the hero, not you. You are the guide. If you think about movies like Star Wars, which Donald Miller talks about in his book, the hero is Luke Skywalker from the original trilogy, right? The guides are Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So in this story, your prospect's the hero, not you. Too many agencies, too many advisors think they're the hero. No, 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 no. Your prospect's the hero. You're just the guide. So when I would deliver this, do you believe what I believe? I just would walk through that story selling formula. And I would tell them what it is most companies want we work with. I'd tell them what the problem is keeping them from there. I'm get, I would give them some legit e examples of how they're losing. And then I would talk about how that losing those problems are leading to their current failure today. And my goal was to see if my prospect agreed or disagreed with me, because I knew by delivering this presentation, I would get one of two reactions. One reaction was they kind of look at me cross-eyed, not quite sure what I'm saying. At that point, if they still didn't understand what I was saying, they probably were not a good fit. And here's the great thing. 
at that point, we're only 15, 20 minutes into the meeting. No harm, no foul. I've only wasted 15, 20 minutes. On to the next one. I didn't spend countless hours and weeks emailing and cold calling and following up with prospects who had no desire to move forward with me. The other reaction was they are nodding their head and you can actually start seeing the anger boiling up inside because no one has ever told them this stuff. They've been thinking it, but no one's ever actually verbalized it. And they're going, yes, this is exactly where we are. When I had that reaction, I knew I had a good one. I knew meeting one was going to turn into meeting number two. And so I started delivering this presentation over and over and over again, and it started working. So why don't I deliver that presentation for you and then kind of summarize it at the end about why this is important to you and how it can help you. Well, remember, as I'm about to deliver this for my insurance professionals listening in, remember, I was a benefit advisor. So what you're about to hear does relate to benefits, but whether you're a commercial risk advisor, or you're a financial planner, this can tie right into your own story. Remember, what I want you to hear is the formula I use to tell the story. And then I want you to go back and I want you to listen to this section of the podcast a couple of times. 